facts you might not know From the biggest flops to the greatest hits This is Trash Can Timbits Hi everyone, it's Beaton, your trivia-loving raccoon for the talk show And that show is Trash Can Tidbits Last time, I asked the question which Steven Spielberg movie did Harrison Ford film a cameo for that was cut? This one was pretty easy. It, the answer is E.T. Ford filmed a cameo as Elliot's principal following the scene where Elliot lets the frogs out of their jars during a dissection lesson. Steven Spielberg shot a scene of Elliot being sent to the principal's office, and the office itself was dimly lit, so we don't see Ford's face, in keeping with the first half of the movie, where we don't see any adults' faces except for the mother. Spielberg decided to cut the scene because Ford's voice was instantly recognizable, and he didn't want his presence to upstage the rest of the movie. Now with that addressed, let's get started with fact number one. Did you know that a Broadway veteran has taken on two projects that involve Greek myths? Broadway actress Lilius White, who has appeared in musicals such as Once on this Island, Cats, and Fela, as well as TV shows like Sesame Street and The Get Down, is best known to Disney fans as the voice of Calliope, one of the muses in Hercules, where she leads the rest of the singing group in the movie's gospel-inspired numbers, including Zero to Hero. White is currently playing the role of Hermes, the messenger god, or rather, goddess and narrator in the musical Hadestown, taking over the role from Andre de Shields, making her the first woman to play the role. Coincidentally, Hercules features Hermes as a supporting character, and Hadestown also features different in interpretations of the fates as supporting characters. Fact 2. Did you know that the video game version of Spider-Man 2 was the first 3D Spider-Man game to feature a then-new web-swinging feature? There had been a couple of 2D games where this mechanic worked, but mostly all of them up to that point had Spider-Man web-swinging by shooting his webs up into the sky, a detail that many developers overlooked. Spider-Man 2 was considered the first to have the webs stick to actual buildings to web-swing. The game was in fact praised for that feature. Ever since, most 3D sandbox Spider-Man games have used this realistic way of swinging through the city. Fact 3. Did you know that a stuntman who played one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the original film got a major role in the sequel? Ernie Reyes Jr., who was the major stuntman for Donatello, was so well-liked by the producers and the crew that when it came time to make the next film, TMNT 2 Secret of the Ooze, they created a new character just for him. Reyes played pizza deliverer slash aspiring martial artist Kino, who helps the Turtles in their new adventure. Kino was created to replace Casey Jones from the original film, who many critics complained was too violent in a film made for kids. Fact 4. Sticking with the Ninja Turtles for this next fact, did you know that Judith Hogue, who played April O'Neil in the first film, declined to reprise her role in the sequels? This was due to her reaction to the original as being too violent for her tastes, as well as her displeasure on how the stunt performers were treated, as the film was very difficult to make due to both the puppetry and the heavy stunt work involved. She was replaced by Paige Turco in the two sequels. Hogue and Turco have since become good friends, and even the former April agrees that the latter actress is more like how the character should have been portrayed, as Turco's performance and chemistry with the Turtles was more like how it was in the original cartoon. Fact 5. Did you know that contrary to popular belief, movie studios in 1920s Hollywood did not switch immediately to sound when The Jazz Singer was released? Talking pictures did indeed become a reality with the release of the aforementioned film, but not all studios were ready to try it because the technology was so expensive and difficult to use. There were in fact two methods of sound recording at the time, and both were very cumbersome and not all theater owners were willing to pay to install speakers and sound equipment in their theaters. It essentially became a wait-and-see process. The first all-talking sound film was 1928's Lights of New York, which was critically panned, but still made money because of talking pictures being the next big thing. By the end of 1930, however, talkies became the norm in Hollywood. But some filmmakers were still making silent films well up to the end of the decade, but that's a story for another day. Fact 6. 
Did you know that four James Bond actors were originally programmed into GoldenEye's multiplayer mode, but had to be taken out before the game was released? As mentioned in another video, the game's multiplayer mode was an afterthought, a very short time before it was ready to ship. One idea that the developers at Rare had was to have models of four Bond actors as playable characters in addition to Pierce Brosnan, the other three being Sean Connery, Roger Moore, and Timothy Dalton. Unfortunately, the other three Bonds had to be taken out due to licensing issues. Connery, in particular, didn't want his face featured unless he was paid a lot of money. Allegedly, the developers had a six-hour gaming marathon using the four Bonds before they were taken out. The selectable files in the game's main menu also originally had those same actors' faces on them, but in the final game, all of them had Pierce Brosnan's face on them. The model's tuxedos would later be featured in Perfect Dark's multiplayer mode as a tribute to the four Bonds. Fact 7. Did you know that the movie GoldenEye was the start of a three-picture deal with BMW to promote their cars? The featured car in that movie was a blue BMW Z3 Roadster. However, Bond is only seen driving it once and doesn't feature any gadgets, apart from one brief moment where a radar pops up. This was because the deal came late in the production. So late, in fact, that the car was a prototype, meaning that there was only one made for the film. As such, it could not be used in any chases or be damaged in any way, so it was on screen for barely two minutes in the final film. To compensate, the famous St. Petersburg tank chase was created instead. Fact 8. Did you know that Morgan Freeman's role as Red Redding in The Shawshank Redemption was tailored to his acting style? In the original Stephen King story, Red is actually a white Irishman with graying red hair, and Robert Redford was one of the top contenders for the part since he looked more like how Stephen King described the character. Frank Darabont, the film's director, however, had Morgan Freeman in mind for the part because of his voice and his demeanor and presence. The joke line that was left in the script was a throwback to the portrayal of the book of why his nickname is Red. Maybe it's because I'm Irish. And as we all know, Freeman's narration in the movie made him the go-to guy for documentary and movie narrations ever since. Fact 9. Moving to another fact where the color red plays a part, did you know that despite the villain in the Bond film from Russia with Love being referred to by fans as Red Grant, he's not actually called red at any point in the film? Robert Shaw, who would later gain a new generation of fans as Captain Quint in Jaws, played the Spectre-hired assassin, Donald Grant, who shadows James Bond throughout his mission, while Bond himself does not know that he's being manipulated by Spectre. Grant, in disguise as an MI6 agent who meets Bond on a train, gives himself away during the dining car scene where he orders red wine with fish, which Bond realizes doesn't go together. That is where the nickname Red comes from, and was later added to the character's name from that point forward in promotional materials. Fact 10. Did you know that the decision to make the Brady Bunch Kids a singing group came about before the production of the second season began? The original rendition of the Brady Bunch theme song performed for the first season was done by a group called the Peppermint Trolley Company, who were active from the mid to late 60s and was best known for their 1968 single, Baby You Come Rollin' Cross My Mind. One day while shooting, Christopher Knight, who played Peter Brady, was overheard singing the theme song. And it suddenly occurred to the producers to have the entire cast of kids sing the song from the second season onwards, and in the process, the Brady kids became an actual singing group during and after the show's run. As recently as fall 2022, Barry Williams, Christopher Knight, and Mike Lickenland, who played Greg, Peter, and Bobby Brady, respectively, were featured as The Mummies on The Masked Singer, where they performed the theme from fellow 70s TV pop group, The Monkees. And here's today's trivia question. With the release of the movie Glass Onion on Netflix, it's the first movie to directly acknowledge the COVID-19 pandemic taking place in the summer of 2020. The plot of the movie is a familiar one. A mystery lover invites a group of friends to his island home to take part in a series of parlor games in which the night will end with allegedly someone being murdered. The host of the party is an eccentric billionaire named Miles Braun, played by Edward Norton. Miles' demeanor is wisecracking, but also devious, and he obviously has something to hide. He also may or may not be based on a real person. 
My question to you is, true or false, Miles Braun in Glass Onion is directly based on Elon Musk. And there we go. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Trash Can Tidbits, and stay tuned for more fun content. And as always, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and ring the bell to be notified for future videos. It's the only way my channel can grow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.